morning, everyone, and thank you for joining today's meeting. And once again, happy International Women's Day to all of us on this call. It's always a, a nice privilege to meet with women of this capacity. And anytime I'm in the midst of women, I'm always so excited. And this month has been given to us by the United Nations to for all women to be celebrated. So once again, happy International Women's Day and welcome. Please let's get to the chat box. We will not have enough time to do the introduction one after the other. So you can just tell us your name and where you are joining us from and possibly your organization in the chat. As you do that, you can also drop your different social media handles for connection if you want to connect with you. If you want us to also connect with you, you can go ahead and do that. So please introduce yourself in the chat, the chat in the comments box, introduce yourself, your name, where you are joining us from, and also the name of your organization. So once again, welcome. Um, this, this year's International Women's Day is on, the theme is Invest in Women Accelerate Progress. And the campaign theme is Inspire Inclusion. Of course, that is why we are all here to invest in women, to inspire inclusion. And that is why we choose a very, very nice topic to treat today on financial management. So I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so super excited to be here with all of you. And so we'll just get straight in. We'll get straight in without wasting much time. I'm going to call on our executive director, um, Ms. Thank you, Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's good to be here. Happy International Women's Day to every one of us and for any man joining us. Thank you for joining us. A woman brought you into this world. So thank you for celebrating with us. We did set aside to celebrate women. And at TAD, we've decided to also come together again to see how we can contribute to whatever it is women are going through uh, today with the theme, of course, as she has said, invest in women, accelerate progress. Who are those investing in women? Is anyone really interested in investing in women? But if they're not interested in investing in us, we are ready to invest in ourselves. And that's why we have put this together. We brought someone who talks about money, who knows about money, talks about money every day to also advise us how we can make money, how we can save our money. We are all aware of the many challenges going on in the world and especially in Nigeria, what we are all going through. And women are mostly the ones bearing this brunt, mothers, daughters, grandmothers. They're the ones out there struggling to make sure the family is taken care of. And we also know the poverty level is on the increase due to most of these problems we have across the world and of course in our country, Nigeria. Women have to make that tough decision to make sure that children, the family is being catered for and that no one is left behind. So as part of our contribution to this year's International Women's Day, we've invited someone, as I said, who talks money every day someone who gives advice on how to make money and how to save. She'll be talking about financial literacy and investment opportunities for women. There are a lot of opportunities out there for women that we're not really taking um, opportunity of. So she's going to be advising us what we need to do to make sure we're not missing out. And I hope, I saw someone writing there that um, she's ready with her pen. So I hope we're all ready to jot down and not just jot down at the end of this to make sure we look at what we've written down, what we've put up there and how can I start? It's never too late to start. How do I move on with what I've learned from here? So I hope at the end, we'll all have one thing to take back home and ready to overcome some of these challenges that we are all, we are, all of us are going through it. All of us are going through it, plus the children, plus the mothers, the fathers, everyone is going through. But if as women, as housewives, as sisters, as mothers, we're able to come up and tell those that I'm able to do this, I'm sure they will be glad and we will get the support we need. And of course, we'll also 
have the opportunity to become great assets to our family, to our community, and to our country in general. I thank you all for being a part of this. I wish all of us a good outing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful opening remark. It's always a pleasure listening to you. And I am also brewing myself um, so, so well to speak as eloquent as you. But thank you so much, ma'am, for that. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Okay, so we'll move into the next item on our agenda. And um, I, I just remember that when I started speaking, I did not tell you who I am. So I'm so sorry about that. My name is Owan Kwankuta, and I am the Programs Officer for Tax Foundation. And I'm not on the call alone. I have my other team members on the call with me. Olivia is here, Wisdom is here, Frank is here, and of course, Mr. Innocent is here with us too. And of course, our ED. So um, thank you so much for, for that. At this point, we'll get into knowing more about Tax Foundation, what we do, who we are. And to take us on this um, session, on, on this session will be Mr. Wisdom, okay, the M and E officer for Post Foundation. Over to you, Wisdom. All right. Good all morning right. once Good again. Morning. I believe we can all see my, my slides. slides. I believe we can all see my slides. All right. Briefly, I will just want to um happy. International Women's Day to every woman who is online with us this morning. I just want to quickly run you through to who we are as an organization, TAD Foundation, also known as Tosin Abimbola Dukwesi Foundation. Uh, at inception of TAD Foundation, the founders sought to ensure that vulnerable women, children, and youth are given a great priority in Nigeria and across the continent of Africa. It's an NGO with keen interest in global issues of development, especially Africa-related issues with a special focus on women, children, and then youth empowerment, technology, and digital economy. The foundation have done a whole lot, have mobilized and see how women and children can be um, uh, poverty can be eradicated amidst women and then youth also by empowering them in diverse ways, including education and giving them relevant skills. One of our core mission as an organization is to be a leading initiative formed with the purpose of eradicating poverty, empowering women and children of African origin through education, relevant skills, as well as creating awareness on better practices to help the climate uh, reduce poverty. What is our passion? Our passion are basically eight areas where we looked at, uh, which are more of our thematic areas, yeah, skill acquisition and better livelihood, education and scholarship, where we have um, several students who are on scholarship under the foundation, we also have um, health education for women and the girl child. Like we had had several um, events that has to do with educating the girl child on her health status, like distributing menstrual path to different secondary schools within FCT. Then we also looked at our nutrition. We know a good diet makes a good living. We are also into youth empowerment, entrepreneurship, and employability. We believe that every youth can be self-employed and empowered when given the right knowledge. We also are passionate about OVC, often and vulnerable child care, where we give them support. Then we also do leadership and good governance. We advocate for youth who will take up responsibility and policies to be implemented to favor of the woman and the girl and the youth. And then lastly, but not the least, we are into digital economy and technology. So far, since inception of TAD, we've been able to accomplish certain few, but not uh, all. But because of time, I'll just go through some of the projects we have done. 
um, been able to reach about 100 women during the last International Women Day event virtually. Then we also were able to reach 400 girls with Project Padha. It was a project we did at a secondary school where sanitary pads were distributed to these girls in public schools. And then we also had a program, a one-day workshop, which was impactful for some of us who came online. We just saw a glimpse of it, a one-day workshop on signs of sexual harassment. And we had over 130 secondary school girls from six different schools in FCT informed and giving adequate information on how to deal with issues like this and appropriate channel to report to. And not all, we also were able to reach 750 secondary school girls from uh, um, within Gagwala Diocese. So we left our comfort zones, not just in our comfort zone. It was a project that we call Project One Girl, One Part Campaign. And then we also had one which we did uh, empowering the indigent women on how to make reusable sanitary pad. And we had about 30 women who were trained with these skills. If you just see a picture slide of it. And then all these were able to be accomplished with our management team. And then we have our team, which we have um, who serves as the program officer who just spoke to you just a few minutes ago. And then we also have Franklin Ambo, our communication officer. And then we also have Olivia Peace as our front desk officer. And we also have myself as the MIE officer. And all these few projects we have been able to accomplish within a short while were accomplished by the help of some of our partners, which include AIT, Dark Communication, SICA, Digivation, Cyber Africa 10, Repower, Power Africa. And these are a list and a few of some of our partners. And we know with more partners, we can do more and reach out to many more women and girl child out there. Thank you for listening. And you can follow us on any of our social media handles. Thank you so much, um, Wisdom. Thank you for that beautiful uh, presentation about that foundation. Um, thank you for letting us know what our foundation stands for and what we do here. Um, at this point, we are getting into the session proper. At this point in time, we are going to introduce our speaker. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and read. Nancy Naji is a highly accomplished media professional, a director and philanthropist, celebrated for her contribution to Nigerian journalism and economic development. As the host and executive producer of Morning Line with Nancy, Nigerian's top business TV program, he brings insightful perspectives to audience daily on African Independent Television, AIT. Nancy is also the founder of the African Economic Congress, hosting interdisciplinary knowledge and solutions, and the convener of the practical and business acceleration math partners. ABN, addressing real business challenges and facilitating connections between entrepreneurs and government institutions. Recognized as one of the Nigerians' most influential women in journalism, Nancy mentored the next generation of reporters and has hosted over 5,000 TV shows featuring high profile guests and global leaders. She engages in high stakes debates and moderate events, including World Bank and IMF meetings, underscoring her commitment to economic development and bridging academic, for academia, policy, and the public. In leadership roles and membership, including chair of the African Center for Entrepreneurship and Information Development, Nancy demonstrates her dedication to professionalism, ethics, and the advancement of media and entrepreneurship in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, with plenty love emoji in the chat box, um, clapping emoji in the chat box, in the chat box please let's, let's welcome Mrs. Nancy Naji. Nice to meet you, ma, and thank you for joining us today. Over to you, ma. 
Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And um, happy International Women's Day to all the women on this platform. And uh, I would also say thank you to all the he for she's that are on this platform too, because we know that we all need each other for a better world. So good morning and thank you. It's um, a very, you know, it's exciting and a pleasure for me to be here. I want to, uh, first of all, uh, say thank you to uh, Dr. Mrs. Tosin Abimbola Dokbesi, uh, the founder of TAD Foundation. Thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for the minute fit for me uh, to come on this platform uh, to speak on such a day like this. And thank you for the work you are doing. Um, you know, they say there's a proverb that says, you know, from tiny drops of water make a mighty ocean, because you may actually never know how many people you impact. I've uh, seen, I saw the presentation earlier by Wisdom, and I pray by God's grace that you will continue to grow with this foundation in Jesus' name. So, um, Let's quickly get into it. It's such an exciting time to be a woman. And why do I say this? Because we know that these days, um, because of the economy challenge, we've seen that women are not taking so many responsibilities. In fact, we've seen that in many homes, women have become even the breadwinners uh, because of perhaps the pattern of their spouses, tough economic conditions, perhaps their spouses have lost their jobs and all of that, you know, even single ladies that are not married, you know, a whole lot now depends on us uh, concerning uh, our money. And that is why it is very instructive that such a day like this is celebrated as the United Nations calls on the world to commemorate a woman's day. A day certified for women, for women. Today, I think, can you all hear me? Because I'm hearing echo. For those we of can hear you very well. Okay, okay. Perhaps for those of us who are speaking, we should unmute, uh, we should mute our audio. I can hear a talk back from here. Okay, so the, the UN is calling, the UN is calling on the world today uh, for us to invest in women to accelerate progress. And how do we do this? We can't invest in women, we can't accelerate progress except we create intentionally create economic opportunities that equip women with our resources and opportunities that promote our personal and economic. Yes. The slide you're seeing now, of course, the theme for today's International Women's Day is women. Accelerate progress. But the core campaign theme for today is inspire inclusion, as you can as see. That will definitely promote personal and economic growth for us as women, that will make us fulfilled, and that will make us empowered. And if we can get all of this together, it will impact overall economy. Now, in Nigeria, for example, in Nigeria, the population of men and women are almost the same. And this now means that providing women with training, financial support, creating platforms such as this that the TAP Foundation has created is really very integral to enrich women with, with you know, nuggets and resources that will make us uh, better. Of course, the theme, as you can see there, inspire inclusion, is more apt now more than ever. Because as women, we need power. We have power, even as women. Some of us may not even realize that we have power. We have that subtle power that has multiplier effects. So you can imagine if we now add financial power to it, it becomes a major component for building inclusive society. One in every ten women, one in every ten women in the in the world lives in extreme poverty. When I mean extreme, not poverty, because poverty has grades. This one is about extreme poverty. 
And that is why it is essential that for you listening to me on this platform, that we are able to pull ourselves out of the uh, economic challenges that we face uh, right now. Um, when I saw this data some time ago, and the data is at a prime working age, for those of us in, in our working ages, only 61% of women are in the labor force versus 90% of men. What does that mean? If a woman does not have a job, how do you begin to be financially independent? So that brings me now, let's go to the second slide. Let's go, we can go ahead. Let me see the second, uh, the other slide. Now that brings me to why financial literacy is very important. The first question is, what is actually financial literacy? And I want to make this presentation as basic as possible so that we can understand, because sometimes we could be mixed in all this big, big English and we are so lost in it. What is financial literacy? Simply put, it means knowing how to handle your money wisely. Knowing how to handle your money wisely, the ability to make wise decisions with your money. And if you're able to make wise decisions with your money, what does it afford you? It gives you greater monetary stability. You are able to be stable monetarily that whenever any challenge comes, you are not running helter skelter. You have clarity that, okay, if there's this challenge, I think I have money to solve it. So if you're able to handle your money wisely, it gives you monetary stability. It gives you less stress. It give, makes us that our BP will not go high. Because for women, for sometimes if you don't have money, you start running helter skelter, you start seeing women, they are, start, they are bringing out their wrappers, they're bringing out their jewelry, they are selling and all of that. So it gives us less stress. Then it gives us in turn, if you're able to have less stress because you don't have financial wahala, as it were, it gives you a higher quality of life. You'll be able to live better. You'll be able to even live longer because now you have money to take care of yourself physically wise, to take care of yourself health wise. You are able to know, okay, I need to go to be doing my checkup every three months or twice a year. Money affords you to do that. It improves your financial well being. Now, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Now, let's take a look at why um, financial literacy is important. Like I mentioned earlier, financial literacy gives us a definitely economic independence, yes. It gives you economic independence. It makes you manage your finances very well. I, 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 I uh, defined earlier why, what financial literacy is. So don't just be, um, don't just be overtaken by the English you are seeing here. It encompasses the knowledge and skills required to make informed financial decisions, manage money effectively, and plan for your future. That I have I mentioned earlier, which is handling your money wisely. Now, why is financial literacy important for women? It is important for us because it makes us take control. If you're in control of your finances, it gives you this kind of edge. It makes you think that whatever that comes your way, you are able to withstand it. If you're a married woman, if you're in a family, let's say if, if your husband has lost his job or things are not going well, or even your husband's pay is not um, adequate and you are financially fit, as a woman, you are able to contribute. But if you are not financially fit, because it's not only physical well-being that you must have even as a woman. Even today, we should know that, okay, we should take care of our health, we should take care of our children, we should take care of whatever it is. But your financial fitness is very essential. And your financial fitness also cascades into other areas. So it empowers us to take control of our financial lives. It makes us also overcome economic barriers. Like I mentioned, we all know we are living right now in Nigeria where the cost of living is so high. Um, we're a crate of egg today. I said, was it today or two days ago, I was selling for 4,500. This is a crate of egg that I bought uh, two weeks ago for 3,007. So I was asking myself, was it yesterday? I said, so if I take 10,000 naira to the market, I'll be able to get only two crates of, two crates of eggs. Meanwhile, two years ago, just a year and a half ago, it could buy me many, many crates when egg was selling, a crate of egg was selling for uh, 1,000 naira. So that is why it is essential 
more than ever is a woman to be financially literate. Now, let me put this here. For the fact that we are literate does not mean that we are financial literate because I've also seen that many of us, even including men, I've seen men that are professors, but when it comes to handling money, they are, they are poor at it. So it's not just only women, but it, it is essential that as women, we are able to take our financial destiny into our hands. So what does it take for you to be a financial literate? You must possess the skills. Can I see the other, the other slide, please? The next slide. You must possess the skills. And what are those skills? You must possess the, the principles, financial concepts for you to understand. Let's go to the next one. This is supposed to be a video, but I don't know why budgeting alone is showing. Now, you must possess the principles of financial literacy. And where does it start from? It starts from number one. Okay, I've mentioned this, this slide you are seeing on the screen, challenges faced by women. I've talked about it, economic disparities and all of that, uh, limited access to financial services, cultural and societal norms, I mentioned all of that. But let me now speak about principles of financial literacy. And number one, number one is earnings. Your income, is the foundation of your personal finance. What is it that you earn as a woman? How much money do you get as a woman? That is the basis for your personal finances. That is the basis of all of this that I will speak today. So if you are not earning as a woman and you're on this platform, try as much as possible to get earning power. Try as much as possible to start something, to get a job, to do a business so that you will make money. Because without making money, you cannot be financially empowered. You cannot be financially independent. So your income is the foundation of your personal finance. It is the basis for your lifestyle and your financial future. So how do you now ex implement the principle of earnings? You need to live within your means. Many of us women are normally boxed into that space whereby we do not live within our means. Some of us are also, um, you know, impacted by what is happening within our environment, impacted by our friends. What would people say? I always say something. Don't live like the Joneses. Don't, don't spend the money you don't have to please people you don't like. So learn to live within your means. Pay for your lifestyle without debt, excessive debt. Manage your income. You've got to manage your income. You need to also find ways to put aside portions of your income for your future. I will come back to that in a bit to uh, tell us, uh, to give us, you know, a fundamental way where we can do this in case you've not started doing that. You need to also set up as women. We should know that we will not remain young forever. As you grow older, your children are also growing older. We need to plan for our future now that we should not even depend on our children for future benefit. Because as women, we also box into that space where we say, eh, my children will take care of me in the future. Have you sat down to think? These economic challenges that we're having right now, you would even throw your child in school. At the end of the day, the child does not have a job. The child whom you are trained in the university is back to your house. You are the one feeding your child. You are the one doing everything for the child. This is the more reason why you need to be financially independent. Do everything within your power, within the space that you are. Agile, healthy, to create financial independence for yourself. And when you are able to get that steady income, open up more sources of income, you are now able to set up an automatic retirement plan for you that you are now able to take care of your future. Now, the second principle is savings. Savings and investment. Creating a budget. A budget is very essential. It will help you put aside your money for savings and investment. This allows you to grow your wealth and can empower you to make major financial plans such as you can buy a house. Who says you can buy a house as a woman? Even if you are married, you can buy a house. You can team up with your husband. You can buy a house. Even if you are a young lady, there are different um, investment outlets now, we'll come back to that later, different investment outlets now where you can invest your money and you make uh, uh, your dividends from it. 
how do you also implement the principle of budgeting? Of course, you. I hope you're listening that I said budgeting on that you have invest savings and investment. For that, you've got to monitor where your money is going to each month. You've got to cut optional expenses, especially now that we're living in a cost of living crisis. Cut optional expenses for the things you can live without and put those monies into savings or investment, into an investment fund, for example. You can also create separate categories for specific goals. You can say, okay, I want to buy a car, for example, or I want to go on holiday at the end of every year. I want to send my children to school, so, so school and all of that. You are able to do it. You create several buckets and you are able to put monies into uh, those uh, buckets. Now let's move to the next principle, which is borrowing and debt. I need to talk about that. Why am I bringing this up? Some people say, oh, I don't like borrowing. No, I don't want to be a borrower. Uh, the Bible empowers me. I must give. Fantastic. You must give. Okay, for those handling the slide, just keep it here. Just keep it here a bit. We should also know our male counterparts, they take risk a lot. Have we asked ourselves why? Part of the risk they also take is borrowing. But I will need to say it here, that you need to borrow wisely. Sometimes. Let me create this. Let me give you this analogy. For example, you're a woman on this platform, and you and you you have the desire to build a house or to have a home. They are we have real estate banks, as it were. We have mortgage banks, for example. How many of us on this platform have gone into a mortgage bank, for example, and said, "Ah, my desire is to own a home, and I want to pay in the next ten years. I want to pay in the next fifteen years." Do you know you can do that? and go into a mortgage bank, perhaps here in Abuja or wherever you're joining us from, and they are able to structure it for you. What that mortgage bank does for you is that it's borrowing you money as it were, then you are paying small, small. At the end of 10 years or 15 years, you are able to own that home. So that is also a, 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 a borrowing style. You cannot actually also say, okay, I want to enlarge my business. How do I do it? I go into a microfinance bank, for example, I need $5 million to enlarge my business. Are you able to speak with them and they're able to borrow you that money, but you have a, a, a borrowing plan and you have a repayment plan. So borrowing wisely could allow you to make major purchases in other crimes like in the US. Borrowing is very essential because it makes you build your credit. The higher your credit, the better your credit is, you are able to do other, other things that money can afford you. So borrowing can actually make you uh, pay for a home, for example, even a car, even a college ed education, for example. So, but you need to carefully weigh your loans to be able to determine that you can afford them. You need also to review and compare interest rates, for example, and you need to pay your bills on time. Now, that brings me to the next principle, which is spending. Because many of us are boxed in that situation that once you get money, the first thing you think about is how am I going to spend it? Now, let me give you a very practical example. When you get your paycheck, or when you get money, consider this rule, the 50, 30, 20 rule. In case you've not, you, will not, you will not learn anything from this uh, uh, webinar, put this down. 50, 30, 20 budget rule. What does this say? Following the 50, 30, 20 budget means you put 50% to your needs. So assuming you earn 100,000 naira, 50,000 of that 100,000 naira, you put it towards your needs. Your needs are your essentials. Your food, your, your home bills, uh, your rent and all of that you put 50,000 Naira of it to the essentials. That is non-negotiable. Then 30,000 of that 100K towards your wants. What do I want? For you as a person, you know what you want. You put it towards your wants. Then the remaining 20% is towards your savings and investment. But if you take a look at yourself, what is your earning potential? How much do you earn? What is your risk appetite? 
For some people, you can say, okay, I can do with 50% for my needs. I can actually do 30% for my savings and, and investment because I don't really want so much stuff. So I can even do like 10% for my wants. But you are able, what this is doing, which I'm practicalizing for you, is that it will make you have a sharp mind towards it. And you are able to do it mathematically so that it doesn't look esoteric. So okay, if I'm any 100K, this is what I want. This is what I can afford. This is the amount I can put for my savings. This is the amount I can put for my investments this month. So it helps you do that. For some people too, they have the 80-20 strategy, especially for those that are business people, especially for those that are entrepreneurs. With the 80 to 20 budget, you pay yourself first by setting aside 20% for your savings. And that pay yourself first may not be you just go on a spending spree for yourself. You say, okay, okay. as I pay myself, this 20%, let it go for my savings. Then the remaining 80% go for your fixed and your variable expenses, which I have mentioned earlier. Then the last one is protecting your assets. I must talk about this. And protection comes from, for example, insurance. How many of us on this platform have insurance, for example, for your car? for your house, for yourself, life insurance. We've seen quite a lot happening these days that, um, you know, okay, let's take an example. The popular news now is very tragic. The uh, group C of um, access holdings that passed. How about Mwigwe? How about Mwigwe passed with his wife and his son, leaving four other children? When I see them, what comes to mind? I said, the breadwinners are gone. What happens to these children? Do they have their parents put monies aside for their tr in trust for them, for example? How can Tochi, who is the eldest now, begin to take care of the siblings? These are things that we must begin to think about, even as women. And we should, as much as possible, try try to protect ourselves. We know that God protects. God is the ultimate protector. But as human beings, part of why you should be financially empowered, financial literacy should give to you is that you should be able to plan for life's unforeseen circumstances. Protecting yourself also include creating an emergency fund, having insurance, creating trust for your children, for example. An emergency fund, take a look at what happened in 2020 during COVID. We did not know that the whole world was shut down. This has not happened in over 100 years. And we shut down for weeks. When we shut down, some people thought, okay, we could shut down for two days, three days, four days, one week, one week went into two weeks, two weeks went into three weeks. And people's savings were exhausted. So what that should also show us and what that should teach us is that we should create an emergency fund. We should build an emergency fund in case of unforeseen circumstances which we cannot control. And what are those unforeseen circumstances? For example, if there's a pandemic, another pandemic, God forbid, or something happens. What if you are sick and you cannot work anymore? What if, for example, your spouse or, your, or, or the person that gives you money, the person you are dependent on, is not available anymore to give you money. What happens? You need to create an emergency fund that would be able to make you live through three to six months. So build a buffer for a three to six months emergency fund. Every month you can say, okay, so so amount of money. If it's 10,000, let it go to my emergency fund. If it's 10,000, let it go to my emergency fund. Then what you do if, you have, if you've been able to build it to an appreciable point, I do not advise you to keep it in the bank for long. You can take out some part of that money and invest into assets that will also give you more money for it instead of it just being in the in the bank. Am I is everyone listening? Am I still there? Am I communicating? Can you hear me? Yes, no, yeah, sure. okay. 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 So Setting your financial goals is very, very important. You need to create a budget. And budget, don't see, don't see it as something that is very hard to do. No. All you need to do is to just tablet. Okay, how much do I spend for food? How much do I spend for transport? How much do I spend for my clothing? How much do I spend for school supplies? How much do I spend for gas? How much do I spend for uh, 
uh, unplanned expenses. When you're able to itemize that, you get that every month, for example, it gives you an, it gives you an idea of what your budget is like. Then from that budget, then you are not able to cascade into other things. All right, now let's move over to the next slide because I think we're almost approaching 11. The slide of uh, investment opportunities. So that I'll go straight to that. At least now we have a foundation on why we need to be financially uh, independent. Can we go to the next slide, please? Where we have uh, investment opportunities. Let me pull it out here. Okay. Now, in those slides, on the slides, as you, you get to see them, we have different types of investments, investment opportunities. We have different types of investment opportunities. And let me start by talking about stocks. Talking about stocks, yes. For people that may just be hearing this for the first time or, or, you are, or you've heard stocks, you don't understand what it means. Let me just simply explain it. For example, let me take, um, let me take Dangote Cement, for example. Dangote Cement is a company. It is listed on a stock exchange. For a company, for a company to have a stock, that means it is listed on a stock exchange. A stock exchange is the institution where companies list their stocks for the members of the public to buy. So what this affords you, it affords you the opportunity to buy the shares of those companies. So for example, Dangote Cement is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So what you can do is part of your money is every month. You can say, I'm taking out 5,000. For example, I'm giving you an example. Dangote Cement could be selling like for 200 Naira a stock, a share. So you could say, I'm taking out 5,000 Naira, for example, and I'm going to invest in Dangote stock. If Dangote stock is 200 Naira, how much will 5,000 give you? Would that be 25? It will give you 25 units of Dangote stock. That means that if Dangote Cement release their Earnings, they make money at the end of every quarter, they release it, or at the end of the every year, they release it. Then they will say, okay, we are giving our shareholders so so amount of money as dividends. If you buy a stock in Dangote cement, for example, it has automatically made you a shareholder. So what that means is that if Dangote makes money every year, the amount of money they bring out, you have a share in it as dividends as a shareholder. So investing in stocks involves you buying shares of publicly traded companies, which I mentioned earlier. That is your 200 Naira or your 5,000, for example, you use it to buy 25 units of Dangote shares. It offers you the potential for capital appreciation. Now, let me explain this. It gives you two opportunities. When Dangote pays dividends, you get dividend income. So Dangote can say, ah, for our shareholders of this year, we are paying five Naira as dividends. That means that for your 25 units of Dangote stock, you multiply by five Naira, that is your dividend. But for the capital appreciation, if you buy it at 200 Naira, definitely Dangote cement will not remain at 200 Naira. As the market gets better, as the economy gets better, that share that you bought for 200 Naira can increase to 220, can increase to 250, can increase to 200, 300. What does this mean? You have made capital appreciation. From that, your capital, you've gotten appreciation, including your dividend. So as women, we can invest in stocks through the Nigerian stock exchange or even other international markets. And how can you do this? Professionals can help you do that. Now in Nigeria, we have different um, fintechs that can help you do this even on your phone. But I must also tell you that you've got to be very careful as women, we should also invest in knowledge. We should read. We should do research before we invest in such platforms. What you can do also, stockbrokers can also actually help you do that. I say, okay, every every month, though, I'm bringing out 50K. I want to be investing in stocks. 
And I want you to take a look at this with open mind. And don't think it's until you have one million. No, you can begin to build. Building wealth is gradual. And the stock market affords you to do that because it is long term. Now, let's move to bonds. Bonds are fixed income securities that provide regular interest payments and return of principal at maturity. This is under investment time. And uh, let me explain. For example, now the federal government of Nigeria, they've been giving bonds since they've been bringing out bonds. What does that mean? It's like the government of Nigeria is borrowing from us. They'll say, oh, we have so-so bonds so for 2027. So if you have a million naira, for example, a hundred thousand naira, you buy federal government bond. By 2027, you will have your principal back. That hundred thousand, they will give it back to you. But every quarter, they pay you an interest. That is what you see there, that they are fixed income securities that provide regular interest payments. So those regular interest payments could come quarterly. So the, the federal government bond could say, the federal government could say, okay, we're paying you 13% interest. So you'll be getting that interest every quarter, but your principal will be at the maturity of the bond, which is like in 2027, and you get your 100,000 Naira back. So you can invest in government bonds. You can also invest in corporate bonds. You can invest in fixed income mutual funds, for example. Now, uh, there's another thing I would want to say, especially now that the Central Bank of Nigeria just raised interest rates last week. We've seen that the federal government now is mopping Naira everywhere. Then this asset class, this investment class is gaining so much ground now, which is treasury bills. Treasury bills this week, for example, gave an interest of about 17 to 21%. Now, as a woman, you can say the next batch of treasury bills, let me be part of it. I have 500,000 naira somewhere. Or well, I have 1 million in my bank, not doing anything. What you can do as a woman is that, I think it's coming out again in the next two weeks, but I was told, I was it two days ago by one of my bankers that now that the federal government has put it at 50 million, that's the minimum price. Why is this treasury bills okay? Even though inflation is at almost 30% in Nigeria, I advise people, don't put your money in the bank when some are not even giving you interest. Or if they give you interest, they give you an interest of 5% or whatever annually. Treasury bills is coming at 17 to 20% interest. You can put your money in treasury bills. They have three months treasury bills, six months, that's 182 days, 365 days in tre um, treasury bills. That means at the end of one year, at the end of six months, at the end of three months. So you can say, okay, I want to buy treasury bills of 91 days. That is three months. In your bank, you speak with your banker or your bank, I'm interested in this. Let me do this. You pay in 500,000 naira, for example. When you pay in 500,000 naira, for example, if the federal government says the treasury bills rate for that um, treasury bills uh, um, package for that month, or for that week is 17%. So what your interest will be, if you are doing three months, or if you are doing 90 days, or if you are doing 182 days, what your interest would be, you would be able to say, okay, I'm doing three months, which is 90 days. 90 over 365. I'm just teaching you now practical so that you understand how to calculate your interest. 90 days over 365, times 17%, for example, times the amount that you are investing, which is, let's say, a million naira. I hope you all are getting what I'm saying because I'm trying to make this as basic as possible so that it's not, um, it doesn't look so esoteric. So it could be 90 divided by 365 days. Of course, we're not probably, we have 365 days in a year times... 17%, I'm just taking the rate for last, is it last week? No, this week, 17 to 21%, it depends. The longer you keep it, the higher the interest. So three, six, uh, 90 days is doing um, 17%. Uh, six, uh, six months is doing, I think about 19%. One year is doing 21%. So the longer you keep it, the longer the interest. But we're taking 360, uh, we're taking 90 days, which is three months. 
So 90 days over 365 times 17%, times 17%, times the amount, let's take, um, let's take 1 million, for example, Let's take 1 million, for example, and do the mathematics. That is 90 divided by 365 times 17% times, times, let's take 1 million. If you invest 1 million, for example. So whatever you come up with will be the amount that you will be paid upfront. While at the end of the maturity, that is in three months time or in six months time, you are able to get your interest. But why are you able to get your principal? But why this treasury bills is good is because if you are able to gather a lot of money, you get more interest. But there's no harm in starting small. So I needed to bring that up because that is very essential now, especially now that the Central Bank of Nigeria is trying to mop up all the Naira in the system to be able to contain inflation. Now let's move over to the next one, which, where you see real estate investment. I spoke about it earlier, but I also need to bring this in. I've also seen that there are a few, you know, notable and modern real estate investment. Some people, there are some investment opportunities now that you may not even necessarily have money to buy the house wholesale, but a group of you put together money and you get a house, and whatever is rental income from that house, you make money from it. If you are able to buy a house, fantastic. It gives you that opportunity for long-term capital and rental income. But there are also other investment options within the real estate space, which you can also take advantage of. And don't also think that uh, you may not be able to invest uh, or get money through real estate. Even if you don't have a house, you can de decide as a woman, okay, this real estate, or I have contacts, I know somebody that can rent this house, or I know somebody that can buy this house, and you're able to make the connection. The connection that you have can also bring you money in terms of commission. So don't think that, don't think otherwise, and just put your hands together and just fold it and say, things will come to me. That is also part of why men do better with money, because they are thinking, they are making contacts. Even some they are not real estate agents. By just word of mouth, they make commissions. So as a woman on this platform, also think about that. Then the next one that you're seeing is mutual funds. Mutual funds pull money together. Mutual funds bring your money, my money, everybody's money. They put it together and they invest in a diversified portfolio. So that portfolio could involve stocks. It could involve bonds. It could involve treasury bills, money market everything together. What does that afford you? That the slices of all the dividends from the stocks, bonds, and co will be paid to you. For mutual funds, for example, investment, as a, investment banks do that. There are many investment banks. Even some of our banks these days have investment uh, institutions. You have like, not just giving them advice, like Stambic IBTC, I think Access, you have different, different, different investment uh, uh, um, banks that can help you do this. You can just walk in there and they speak with you and you can start from wherever you are. Don't say until I have a million naira. No, wealth is supposed to grow over time. Say, okay, this is what I can afford. And they are able to advise you. Uh, um, in, um, they are able to advise you for the next investment class or the one that is appropriate to you. Now let's go to the next slide. And I also need to talk about this. And I think the next slide should be entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, for many of us that are women, we are found doing different businesses. Some women just enter businesses through hustle, as it were. You know, you can start your own business or even expand your own business. Some women on this platform could think, oh, I have social business idea. How do I start? Or, I don't even have business ideas at all. The world is a global village now. What the world is now affording us to do is that you can do a lot of stuff online. You can think about what kind of business do I start? Do I even need a store to start? You can start an online store. You can sell products online. You may not even need much money or even much experience to start. You need to ask yourself, what are the products that people are interested in right now? 
What are the products that the market is interested in right now? What are the products that are selling right now? And you begin to do, you begin to do that. So you can start an online store. There's a lady that I just bought stuff from her online. I don't even know her. I don't know her store. I know she has a store in um, Abuja in Guarimpa, but I've not been up to her store before. I saw her online, so I, I purchased the product. And she's the one making the products. I purchased the products from her. Just a few days ago, I saw online where she posted that she was shutting her store down. She was shutting her fiscal store down, but she has now become an online store. And this thing just rings in my head that, oh, you just rang. That, okay, it could be a, the economic challenge. It could be she's spending much more money, but she did not shut her business down. She just changed her business model from a fiscal store to an online store. So what would that afford her to do? It will afford her that the money she would have paid for um, rent, she will convert it into perhaps producing more products and more sales and doing more online ads and all of that. And if I speak to her like in six months time or in one year's time, don't be surprised that she'll be making more profit than she has a fiscal store. So think about that. There are other kinds of businesses you can do. Cosme they are skincare, uh, businesses now. Every woman wants to look good now. Have you all noticed this? No woman wants to leave herself now. Whether it's hair, whether it's skin, whether, whatever it is, cosmetic, skin care is also one part of the business, but you need to be able to get information, laundry. There are many businesses, catering, many businesses that you can do that will also go back to that foundation which I mentioned earlier, earnings and income. All right, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, the next slide, savings and budgeting, which I, I talked about earlier. The next slide, please. Of course, you need to set, set your financial goals. You need to track your expenses, which I've mentioned. You need to prioritize your savings and you need to automate savings. Now, to help you also save, um, there are different avenues now because for some people, they also find it hard to save. But you could do better by automating your savings. You could even do that online. There are a lot of apps now that can help you do that. For example, PiggyVest. PiggyVest is one app. There are, there are many of them that immediately you get money. You just say, let them be, be taking this 55K every month. It doesn't even need your approval because you've set it up. So every month it takes that money from your account. Then it compounds it. And don't forget the power of compounding interest. You need to be able to have savings. Then compounding interest is so, so rich. Billionaires understand this, but it's those of us that are not billionaires that will think, oh, until I have one billion or one million. No, the power of compounding interest. Now let's go back, let's go to the next slide. Diversifying investment portfolio. For all those investment classes which I mentioned, you need to diversify your investment portfolio across this. Don't only buy stocks and say, I've invested, I'm okay. Don't only do real estate and say, I'm invested, I'm okay. Don't only do mutual funds and say, no, I'm invested, I've invested, I'm okay. For you to be able to have good investment portfolio, you need to diversify across all the sectors. What does that afford you to do? For example, when there's inflation, as we have now, one asset class will be gaining more money than the others. When the economy is not good, not all the investment class will come down. And even invariably, even if all the investment class comes down, the level of losing will not be as much anymore. So you need to diversify your portfolio. So invest, invest, uh, in diversification is essential to managing investment risk and maximizing your return. So it helps you manage your risk. And I will also advise, especially after this webinar, that you want to take your investment seriously, you go to investment banks, they ask you, they will be able to take a look at your risk profile. For people in their 20s, for example, your risk profile will be higher than a woman in her 40s or in her 50s. You are able to take more risk. So what does that mean? You are able to say, okay, I'm able to um, invest more in stocks. More of my money will go in stocks than in bonds because bonds give you more fixed 
asset, you know, is moderately risky. But for a woman in her 40s or 50s, I say, okay, let me just do euro bond. Let me do bonds. Because you know that, ah, my risk level, my risk appetite is not that much. I don't want to lose too much money. The same for, their, for women in 50s or 60s. So you are able to diversify your investment portfolio according to your risk appetite. And your risk appetite also comes with age and comes with how much you need to invest. Let's move to the next slide. Assessing financial services. I need to also talk about this because sometimes we also take a look at our banks as just institutions who keep our monies. There are many banks across the country now whereby you can walk in, they have different products for women. Different, different products for women, different products for women in business. But you must need to assess that information. Now, when you go to them, you say, what are the products that you have that can benefit me as a woman or that can benefit my business? So you need to assess those information. I don't think uh, they are just doing it to, you know, it's just a certain class of people that benefits. No, you've got to seek for uh, information. Um, the next slide. Is that the next slide? Conclusion? Okay. Oh, I've spoken. This is 11.15. So as I conclude, because I know we'll have Q&A, financial literacy and investment opportunities are essential for women's uh, economic empowerment and economic independence. I hope that we've understood the financial concepts, which I mentioned earlier, investment options, which I've also broken down. I hope that with this, we can achieve our financial goals and create a better future for ourselves and our families. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much ma for the great presentation. Thank you. Um, it was really nice listening to you and I personally have learned one or two things. So I know that the participants here on this call today have also learned something from your session this morning. And um, we'll get straight into the question and answer um, session. So please, if you have a question, you can show by the rest of hand. You can also put it in the comment section with your read it out. But before then, but there was a question that was dropped in the chat. I don't know if you would love to address that question now. Do you have it or I can read it out? A question in the chat. Let me see. Yes. Uh okay. No, I can't. Can you read it out? I'm not seeing any here. Okay, okay that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. Madam, Madam Nancy, this question is being asked by Olua Femi. Madam Nancy, mm -hmm. as an activator for the Nigeria Economic Progress, if truly ma, why you and other likes me, other likes mine, haven't strongly advocates the importance and disadvantage of the ongoing insecurity in the country that have hindered all this as follows. One, farmers not being able to go to their farm activities regularly and productively. Two, closure of borders in order to avoid the illegal ways of bringing in firearms into the country as the government claims, which okay, has caused... Yes. Can you hear me? Can I... Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? You're breaking. Can you hear me? I can take the question from here. I've seen it. So let, let me answer the question. Can you hear me? Let me answer the question. Um, yes, the, the, the question goes as follows. Let me just quickly read it for those that I have not, uh, that I have not seen, but I think it's on the, it's on the platform. Uh, the, the question is that farmers, that people, why have people like me not advocated the importance and the disadvantage of the ongoing security in the country? That have hindered, uh, that have hindered all this as follows. Farmers are not able to go to their farm activities, closure of borders in order to avoid illegal ways to bring in fire uh, firearms. Then another major reason of the removal of government subsidy. Then lastly, we all know some MSMEs have been victims of fraud and robbery within the bank and outside the bank in this digital banking, which makes them losing their capital. What are the measures? have financial security have digitally put in place to reduce criminality to a reasonable and affordable level. No matter how resourceful the economy is without adequate and effective security, we can't move progressively. 
Okay, thank you for this question. I don't know if, if this platform is the right place to answer this uh, because we're talking about financial literacy and investment. But I think I will need to, uh, to comment on this. I don't know who sent it, the name of the person who sent it. If you have been following me specifically, and if you've been following the program that I do on AIT specifically, you will know that as a program and as even a station, as, as AIT as a station, that we've taken it upon ourselves to be advocates for the people. Uh, two weeks ago, for example, we had a town hall on just insecurity alone. I was a co-anchor on that, on that town hall. And we brought in all the stakeholders, including the police and all of that. And all of them, even the Meiti and La people, all, they were about 15 on that panel. And we talked about insecurity. So um, we'll continue to do our bit as a fourth estate of the REM to be able to be the voice of are the people I know now that insecurity has hindered so many things, and that's also part of why we're having food inflation in the country because farmers can't go to their farms. I've been an advocate for speaking to government and for being the voice of the people in terms of telling the government what they need to hear. You talked about closure of borders. We know what happened in 2019 when President Buhari closed the borders, and I spoke about it at that time, and that was even the beginning of this inflation. If you look at it from 2019, we've seen that food inflation has uh, uh, increased. Uh, you talked about MSMEs being victims of fraud and robbery. Uh, I really don't understand what you mean by that. But with my understanding of what you're saying now, I know that a lot of people that are banks, for example, people lose money in banks. Sometimes I see things on social media. People say, oh, that they're taking money. I didn't authorize it and all of that. And that is why it is, it, it is important for you to be financially literate. You have your apps on, the, on your phone. You get alerts. Have you gone through your bank statement, for example, to see how much did the, my bank take from me today? Why are they taking this money? Did you call your account officer? Have you gone to even your bank, for instance? Sorry, the lights just went off. Have you gone back to your bank to say, I need, why is this here? Why is this here? Some of us, don't even take caution. Some of us will give our pins to our friends or even your children as it were. Your pin is personal <laughs> to you. Some of us, you have it in places where people can easily copy or access. Some of us, your, your personal identification number are things that people can quickly identify and they take it and rob you. But that is not excusing the banks. If you also follow me closely, I've been an advocate that we need to have financial institutions that are more responsive and responsible. So I think um, I've answered your questions in, in the best form possible. Then the other thing I need to say concerning investment, when I'm talking about investment, I don't mean Ponzi schemes. Because for us as women too, we are also prone to investing in pyramid schemes or get quick schemes. That bring 5k today. I will give you 50,000 in the next 24 hours. There's a WhatsApp group that I belong to. I saw it, was it three weeks or last month? That somebody, I don't know how that person had access into the group. I said, bring 50,000 now. We will multiply it in 24 hours. And I saw that people were reposting. I said, are people, why are we so gullible? So don't find yourself, that is not an investment opportunity. That's a scam. I remember in the days of MMM, many years ago, I went on my platform and I told people, I told Nigerians, don't do this. People are even started getting threats. People were threatening me. That is it my money? Why would I say, is it my money? Even some people within the office space where I work, eh, I invested 50K, eh, I get 150 in three days, now your money. I said, okay, no problem. But when it will come banging back, and he did. But for some people that took my advice, at least if they see me outside, they say, oh, thank you for that advice. I listened to your show that day. And because of that, I did not do. So don't invest in Ponzi. Don't invest in pyramid scheme. That is not what you are being taught today. Invest in asset classes that can grow your wealth over time. That in the next 10 years, in the next five years, in the next 20 years, you look back and say, oh, was I the one that did this? Oh, I'm not a millionaire. And you can get it done. All right. I think I'll... I'll um, I will uh, pause on this question now. Thank you. Okay, Ma. Thank you so much. So there is another question by Deborah. Dr. Nancy, how do we keep our business alive under the hard 
rising inflation. Sorry, okay. The question is, doc oh, I'm not a doctor yet, <laughs> but when I receive it in Jesus' name, you're calling me a doctor. <laughs> How do we keep our business alive with under, under hard biting inflation? Wow, that's a, that's a difficult question. And I try to I address this on the program last Thursday. Yes, I have a segment I do every month called the Business Clinic. And last week, we talked about, you know, your business surviving in times of high inflation. I don't know the kind of business you do specifically. If I know the kind of business you do specifically, I'll be able to advise you better. But for in the period of high inflationary times right now, you need, you, you need to be extra careful. You need to take a look at your business model. Is this still working? That's one. Number two, how can I continue to make sure that I get cash flow? For some people now, for some businesses, I've heard some business owners complain that if they buy something for 59 and they're selling it for 69, for example, by the time they go back to buy, that money will not be able to buy that thing anymore. So what I can advise you in that, in that, in that instance is when you go to buy or when you sell, that when you go to buy to sell, Try as much as possible to work out a percentage that can make you still buy if you want to buy so that you remain in business. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I would have loved to know the kind of business that you do. So I'm more specific in terms of this advice. I'm just taking, taking it uh, generically. But for this inflation is really, 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 really so tough. So you've got to also take a look at the inventory, do I need to do, if I buy like 100 before, do I need to do like 50 and sell more turnover in terms of volume? Instead of like buying 100 and your monies are not able to, to buy that 100 anymore. So I hope that this helps. Is there another question? I'm getting questions around uh, around, the, around the inflation, not around investment classes. <laughs> <laughs> With my investment okay, so money, I want to get on that. She just mentioned that she's in fashion designing and food store. Okay. Uh, you are into fashion designing and food store for side business. Compla company, uh, customers are complaining. Now, for fashion designing, I'll take that first. For us now as Nigerians, what we are thinking about is food. Because we spend three quarters of our income on food. So I would, I would advise you that you concentrate on your food. Concentrate your, your, all your attention on food until everything stabilizes. Even if you're doing the fashion design, are there essential fashions? Is it like school uniform, for example, where you know that parents will buy school uniform? Even parents now are not even buying many clothes for their children anymore. It's so okay, manage the ones you are managing, perhaps till a certain time like Christmas. So you must be able to concentrate on this business class, which is food, because everybody must eat. I hope I've answered that. Now, I'm not saying you should shut down your passion designing business too. Hello? I'm with you, ma. Yes, with you, ma. Okay, okay. Okay, ma, so there is another question. Which investment platforms or outlet do you advise we go into? I don't understand that question because I mentioned I mentioned that earlier. Do you mean what asset types do you want to invest? Or, or online? Let me ex explain what you mean. Do you want to invest but you don't know the places to invest your money? Is that what you mean? Um, for or, B, do you want to explain that you, time? Yeah, or what platforms do you invest that money? Is that what you're asking? I think the, the first one, she just said yes, ma. I think she wants to invest, but she doesn't know which to go into. To invest, okay. I, I That was my presentation, but it depends on how much you have. That's one. Um, I mentioned earlier you can take advantage, advantage of stocks, for example. For example, there are apps that you can log on to like Bamboo, 
for example, curry, uh, curry, curry wise, or you can even get your stockbroker, get a stockbroker to help you do that. You can start by investing even if it's 50,000. There's also another investment asset called the savings bond within that bonds I mentioned earlier. It's a, a federal government bond whereby the minimum to invest is 5,000. So you do not have an excuse not to invest. And it comes out every month, every beginning, begin the Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, so, so you can invest in stocks. You can invest in mutual funds, like I've mentioned. You can invest in bonds. You can, even these treasury bills I, I mentioned, you can walk into your bank and ask your account officer, or even ask the customer service, I want to do treasury bills. Do you people do treasury bills? They say yes. They will just direct you on what to do. So, okay, this is how much I have. This and this, they, they will advise you better. Instead of just keeping your money in the bank and it's not, it's not making money. So I hope I've answered your question. Yes, I hope so too. Esho, are you satisfied? Okay, ma, please, if you have questions, you can yes, ma, thank you. Okay, if you still have questions, you can either unmute and ask your question or drop it in the chat when you read it. Okay, thank you so much, Ma. I believe that we have addressed all the questions and there are no further questions. So thank you so much, Ma, for that wonderful presentation. And thank you for joining us. It was really nice having you. Thank you so much for sharing your wealth of experience with us. I've personally learned so much. Thank you so much, Ma. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you very much to Tad Foundation for affording me the opportunity. And I hope that I hope that this will be, you know, this would ignite us on this platform that you can, you know, take your financial future into your hands and don't be afraid to start. Start small and grow your wealth. And um, God will help us that by the next International Women's Day, you're looking back and saying, one year down the line, I'm better financially. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Dosi Dokbesi for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining today's call. It was really, really nice you know, meeting with each and every one of you and also having to listen to Nancy speak to us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your patience. And please, um, in, in case we reach out to you that we want to create like a WhatsApp platform where we can all be for further connections and contributions and idea and experience sharing, please do not say no. And we also want to say um, happy International Women's Day. Let's go out there and make exploits from everything we have learned today. Let's be careful how um, we in invest. We shouldn't invest in the wrong platform, but we have got enlightenment today. So we should go ahead and invest in the right platform, do your businesses and let's make exploits. And above all, let's continue to advocate for women's rights and equality. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining the call today. And we have come to the end of the session. See you again some other time. Have a blessed day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And once again, happy International Women's Day. Bye, everyone. <laughs>